after different subjects have been considered and on Sunday I tried to address the subject of new realms of relationship and I promised I was going to share 10 things you remember I started those 10 things I said quite a number of things before those 10 things how I was speaking about life everybody say life say probably say life say there's a life come on preach with me this evening say there's a life and there is godliness the word of God says it's not just me actually in second Peter chapter 3 chapter 1 verse 3 he says according as his divine power has given unto us remember that scripture all things that pertains to life and godly living godly living there's such a thing called life people of God friendship is life people of God party is life marriage is life celebration is like birthday is life don't make everything about your life godly spiritual god himself does not want that for you you have to have what they call life praise the lord life to greet a friend how are you doing chop not cold is life some christians are so spiritual bless you the lord bless you or more there is life greet people normal eh jollof fries your chop our chop is life do you understand what I'm saying here? Uh -huh. Don't make everything about your life spirits. You are not spirit alone. You are spirit 100%, but you are also 100% human being. To forfeit your 100% human being nature is to dismiss the real benefits of the spiritual life. So be balanced. Amen. Chop life. Do some hair that when you look back from eternity, you'll be grateful you did it some people straight hair from the time they just knew adulthood can you just be life just enter a place where the color is different from what you are used to sit in a car and enjoy life buy juice full one drink it alone i'm not kidding you sir like live life some people have not lived you might think i'm joking sir some people have never bought something with their money like this and be happy and put it on their body. Live life. I don't know how to tell you more than this. Live life. Jesus was laughing at a party when he came to disturb him. To manifest godliness. He was complaining. Say, leave me now. Is this my time? Son of God. Demi, I didn't come for your counseling. You're angry with me. If I was you. You're not serious. Live life. See, eh? Listen to me. I understand what it means to be unrepresented spirit. I was like that. Spirit. As you are talking, a scripture that is entering my head. Until I realized that you can drink ice cream too. It's, it's, not, it's not wrong to eat ice cream. I'm telling you, and you pay. Do you know that? Uh, I'm, I'm saying it jokingly, but I'm very serious what I'm saying. Some of us have never entered a shop. You think they will most collect money from you for entering. They will not collect money from you. Enter. Touch the thing. They won't, you won't break it. How much is it? Enter. We entered the shop recently. Myself, uh, Victor, and my son, Alex. We asked for the price of a shoe. He said it was 180,000 naira. How many? One. You've had that just before. <laughs> Somebody said, I want to buy... What did he say? He wants to buy now. He wants to buy something. Then they called the price. Say, I'm not saying everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think something like that. Hey, man. Do you know laughter is part of life? Yes, sir. You know some people's laughter is... Cut it, laugh and cut it sharp. <laughs> they, they can't laugh full. It's not allowed. They are wondering what are we laughing for. They think we are faking it. They think we are faking this Jesus. They think we are... As I'm talking, they don't know I'm preaching. They feel that I need to be... The Lord shared. The in the, oh, money, sir, I'm preaching right now. God said I should tell you to live this life. Are you here? I'm trying to say here. I'm serious, so I speak by the Spirit of the Lord. Live this life. Taste. He says, oh, taste and see. You have to stop and taste, sir. Taste and see that the Lord is good. One of the blessings of this life I used to enjoy is to put my back on a bed. Ah, mama knows. Anytime I, my back, to, I say, This is life. Hey, this is life. 
Have you ever taken a cold shower without owing anybody? <laughs> like you enter the shower, you use your soap, you finish. And <laughs> you come out, you can use too well. <laughs> Guess what? That's life. I want you to start to see God in every single simple detail of your life. Life. You are blessed with life. Breathe in everybody. Breathe out. Some people paid to do what you just did. That's life. You are thinking it's far away that life when it's like you are already living the life. You understand? You are already living the life. You are already living the life. Have you ever taken cold water on a thirsty soul? That you drank cold water. Maybe you even took it for that with Gary. Hallelujah. Somebody concerned. So, I said all that to say something. Please listen up. I, and I'm very stressed about what I'm saying. That you, I said on Sunday, you need to have new realms of relationship with God. You remember I said so? Yes. New realms of relationship with people and new realms of relationship with yourself. What I just spoke about now is realms of relationship with yourself. Enjoy yourself. Stop chasing yourself. Calm down. Have a relationship with yourself. Tell yourself the truth. Glory to God. Now, having said that you need to have those strata's of relationship, I said something about some people's life being negative. They are their past, their experiences is minus life. You know, I was saying something about that. How their life is minus life. You know, do you remember I was saying something about that? That they now use the life of God, now that they are born again, to recover their self-esteem. They now think that that self-esteem they've recovered is what the life of God is for. No. You have only started normal. You were underground before. We've brought you to normal plane of life now. Now start to live the life of God. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Don't believe that the life of God was just for you to re- pass your exam. Huh? Or to marry. Huh? That's very belittling. On why Jesus Christ came from heaven to die on earth. Just so that you can marry. That's not enough. Hello? Even his parents married before he came. So it's not him that comes to make marriages work. What I'm saying is the truth. Mary was planning to marry Joseph without Jesus. So don't think it is Jesus that will make marriages happen. Hello? Is it not true? You don't think that's why God sent Jesus Christ to now make marriages happen? Some people are spending all their energy trusting God for marriage. I can tell you without Jesus you would have married. And your marriage didn't have to fail. Come on, beat me. There's nothing you can do to what I just said. It's the truth. There is a life. I want you to please be interested. The Lord God heaven of heaven sent me tonight to speak to the body of Christ. Stop using my death, burial, and resurrection for nonsense. Stop it. You think I just came to that so that you can now start have a uh, marriage and now say somebody is toasting me. That's not what he came for. Before he came, that was happening. He must be bringing something that we did not have before he came. Are you getting my argument tonight? So, what I'm saying tonight is that God wants us to enter further realms of relationship with him, with people, and with ourselves. And I said, concerning relationships with people, they give you an experience of life. When you relate with people, you will understand that human beings are weak. Intrinsically. You will no longer be deceived by the packaging of good looks. Or the high highfalutian languages that we all use. You will understand that human beings are fickle. They can look at you like this and betray you and say they are not sorry. Ah, human being. <laughs> okay. Oh no, I'm going to wonder. God said, I almost regret making them. Think about it. 
some of us need to understand what I'm saying here. And I said it on Sunday that the power behind these relationships is that they can be so powerful you could almost replace them for God. Remember I said something like that? You have to be careful not to allow any relationship be so important. Put your value on God so that God can make those people value you. Don't put your value in them directly. It's like direct current. Direct current will, will electrocute you. You need a step down. So, as you open your heart to God, God will open the heart of those you need in your life. How do I know? Proverbs. Proverbs 16, verse 7. When the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Eh, oh. Your enemies, imagine your enemies being at peace with you. They know they are your enemies, but they, they are, we agree with this man. Why? Because your ways pleases the Lord. Remember that scripture says that God is first in priority. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added. The things that need to be added will be added to your life in Jesus' name. Some friends that need to be extradited from your life, God will take them away in Jesus' name. Proverbs 16, 7, is that what it says? Is that correct? Where the ways of a man pleases the Lord, is it correct? It says he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. My boss is not happy with me. Please the Lord. God will visit him. You are not happy with my son. Nobody will be happy with you again. Ah, I'm happy with your son. No? Who is your son, Lord? So, so person. Hey, Lord, I'm happy with him. They come to the office the next day. They are greeting you extra. God knows how to visit those that want to molest you. When that king took Abraham's wife, God visited him. You know what God said to him? You are a dead man. That's how God greeted him. Go and read your Bible. I'm quoting. God said, you are a dead man. Have you read that scripture? Abimelech. When Abimelech took Abraham, he said, you are a dead man. What did I do? He said, you took Abraham's wife. He said, Lord, he did not call him his wife. The, Abraham was guilty, oh. God not tell Abraham, why did you do that, oh? God not going to tell him, Abraham, you lied, oh. God went to visit the man that did not know anything. When the ways of a man pleases the Lord. New realms of relationships. God showed up on the apron. You, you, he said, he said, for even touching the woman, he has not slept with her. He said, you are a dead man. He said, in fact, after you return his wife, give him gifts. That's what he said. And then let him pray for you. For he's a prophet. Prophet that lied. When God is happy with you, your, your action, he doesn't even notice right or wrong. You know, that's what I was telling you, that when God, when people open their hearts to you, no matter what you do, uh, look at music now. When people like you, oh God, there's nothing you can do wrong. They say, hey, leave him like that. Leave him like, we want him like that. that that's not, you know. Their hearts has opened. May people like you like that. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying here tonight? There, there's nothing you can do to some musicians now. Feel a bit for Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, some of you I'm your pastor I hope I will enter that level with your heart that there's nothing my pastor can do I mean I'm preaching with you now praying I've been here praying trusting God for you this message trusting God these guys because you don't even know what they want you say I feel it for say, me I'm preaching now you are not saying I feel it for huh? do you know what I'm talking about yes, sir. when people like you sir they will pay to come and see you they will inconvenience themselves for your sake. New realms of relationships. And it is possible. It is God that opens people's hearts towards you. That's what we read in Acts 16. Remember we read it on Sunday. Verse 14. God opened the heart of Lydia towards Paul. Anything Paul said, yes sir. Paul, anything. Just say anything. I want food. Food. Remember David? I want to taste the water of... of, of eh? You know that kind of nonsense? I want to drink... I'm, oh, oh, that I may drink the water of the... They didn't even tell him we are going. He just went. Next thing we just had people dying. Cha, 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 cha. When they finished fighting, brah, they fetched the water. We are going. For somebody to drink water. Then they went back, charged through back hole. Now give him the water. 
And I say, oh, 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 that I will drink the blood of my servants. <laughs> Pour the water away. And they were not angry. They were not angry. You come on that you came to check on me. I could not see you. Bishop. <laughs> Bishop. Bishop, I call you. You don't, you don't carry my call. Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? There is no, at that level, is that not enough to offend someone? Yes. That people risk their lives for your sake. No. Then they came back and you poured their water. I hope I can be like that to you someday. He did not tell them, go and get the water. He just said, oh, that I may drink of the water of the cave of Adula. Eh? You want to drink water, sir? We're coming. That's all that happened. And they fought their lives. They did not even think they could die. To bring water. When they brought it, he poured it away and they were not angry. When God opens the heart of men towards you, you can't be wrong. It's like this. Even though you are wrong, or even though you are not even sure. Is it yes, I see with you. Both yes, sir. Do you see what I'm saying, sir? You'll be struggling with some music members, choir members. It's like this. You have to see it like Sir, when God opens the heart towards you, they say we understand. We understand. Have you seen the Simpsons when they are seeing rubbish? <laughs> we understand. Or minions. Have you seen them? We get up to Hey. We get, we get it. We get it. We get it. I'm saying it jokingly, but I'm speaking prophetically. May men love you more than you imagine. May their hearts be open to you in a radical and life transforming manner. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why is this necessary? It will make your work in life easier. To make your work in life easier. You will face less resistance in progress. It's important that people love on you. New realms of relationships. So on Sunday I said I was going to give you 10 things. Let's look at it. Number one I said what? Time. Who can remind me? Number one was what? Time. Any relationship you want to enter into new realms with requires time. Are we together this morning? You need some time. You don't enter new realms from the shallow level. You enter new realms of relationship with time. With time. People that you want to grow with, you spend time with. I wrote something on Twitter today and I was saying that attention is the currency with which you can use to exchange for anything valuable in life. Attention, yes. Is, it will make you an attention. Your, your ability to give attention. At, your attention can make you get almost anything. I use the word almost just because I may be wrong, just to leave the chance for being wrong. But I would have said everything. But almost everything in life. Even to get God needs attention. My son, attend to my words. Remember that scripture? Attend to my words. When we pay attention, we become an attention. So I'm trying to say number one is time. Number two, I said your values. Try to know that your relationship with your spouse or your, the person you're dating or your boss cannot be successful or enter new realms without you sharing common values. The Bible says, can two work together? Not if they don't love themselves. It's except they agree. Love is not enough to make you succeed in a relationship. Did you hear what I just said? I didn't say love is not useful. It's not enough. Agreement is arguably more useful than love. You might not have whoo, whoo, feelings. May be agreeable and agree. Are we making some sense? Ah, who is liking me on stage like this? Ah, until Twitter. You know yourself, oh, and I know you. All right, so praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So we said values, and I want you to please note that in your love life, if you have a lover, if you have someone you want to date, or you're someone you're dating, focus more on agreements. Agreement does not mean contractual. It means mutuality in values. I don't mean agreements, contractual, sign here, sign there. No. I mean your values are mutual. For example, some ladies don't appreciate attention. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Give me money. You know there are some ladies like that. I beg now, flower, I want chop. 
You know that some ladies like that. Sure, you know. Ah. They will stone you with your flower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You carry flower, stone you, easy flower onto it. And some, some will die because of flower. <gasps> flower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that? Oh, flower. Oh my God. It's sunflower. Oh. I used to think that thing was fake life before. Until God elevated my level to small, small. Because I don't used to like all this kind of nonsense. What's that? <laughs> But gradually, I started to realize that, ah, no, it's not like that. You have to start to chill. Some people really mean, it means something to some people. Flowers. Values. Some ladies don't have value for family. Money. Let's make things happen. What this one you're saying is rubbish. Some guys don't respect some things. So, if you're dating someone here, you need to check the values you both share. Check where the values click. Where you agree more. You understand? Family values, parental values, spiritual values, cultural values. Those are values you should check. So you don't, don't just say because you love him. You know some people, you are loving the devil. You know when they say, um, the devil is in Prada. Have you heard it? Had, devil wears Prada. Devil wears Prada, exactly. That means looking so clean, looking so, ah, oh, see, bloke. Oh, oh my God. Na devil. Oh yes, na devil. Oh yes, planning to deal with you when you marry him. So you want to check all that. Values are very key. Number three, we said on Sunday, dissatisfaction. You remember I said something about that. This is very useful. If you are going to take a relationship to the next level, you must place a demand on another level. In other words, be dissatisfied with where you are. If you are satisfied, you will not see more in your relationships. You need dissatisfaction. I use the word dissatisfaction in a positive sense in this discussion. So don't see it as a negative thing, please. Do you understand? I mean, you need to be... I don't want to use the word insatiable. I mean, you must be willing to say, I need there's more, sir. There's more. That willingness for more keeps us discovering more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are talking about exploring relationships and we are speaking to 10 points to making you get the best of new realms of relationships. Number four is vision. Everybody say vision. vision. When you know and see where you are going to, it's difficult for you to, to not ask for more. Vision makes us pay the price and you know be concentrated. For example, remember the story of Elijah and Elisha? He asked for double portion. When he was going, the prophets, sons of the prophets were yabbing him. Are you aware your master is going today? bald-headed man he said leave me alone it's not your business i'm following my master vision makes us pay the price despite embarrassing situations vision makes us keep going whether people are abusing us or not if you don't have a vision the small distraction will make you forget the person you are supposed to explore with yeah with a vision even though the distraction we are going to the same place sir some sisters, small distraction for the brother. Maybe his business went down. They are no longer concentrating with him again. I don't think that we, that we have the same future. Because there was no vision. They pressed eject. Eject. So vision keeps us in check. Praise the Lord. Vision makes us know that we are not just wasting our time. Vision. Where are we going to? For example, if you are dating someone, if both of you have a vision of the future in an altar, it's not easy to just quit everything and say, I'm no longer doing everything to waste. No. There's every likelihood you'll be willing to pay the price because of the vision ahead. Am I making some sense? How do I know? The Bible says, who for the joy set before him. Remember that scripture? Hebrews 12. Who for the joy set before him. What is set before you can keep you in line. If there's nothing set before you, any small thing can distract you. Virtues now. 77,000 is there. We're doing some things together. When anything is coming up, I keep myself in line. I keep myself in vision. We keep you in line. If you are dating someone, small thing like this, when you remember vision, you will stay inside vision. Very important to explore the next level of your lives. Are we making some sense here today? Yeah. Don't joke with vision. If you don't see vision in an equation, it is time for you to jackpot. Now, the next one is patience. 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 
And, and I don't mean this just because it's an English word or a nice word or a virtue. Nothing meaningful works without patience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If it must be meaningful, it needs time. Anything meaningful, anything meaningful needs time. Look at this heaven and this earth. This earth, for example. God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, was the one that made it. But it took him 24 hours for any phase of thing he said to happen. It's time. He used one week. Why didn't you just say, Rushankoba! Everywhere. <laughs> Every teacher's food. No. No. He was like, Aslatus. Arukushanka. You know, he didn't do that, though. He didn't do that. One after the other, let there be. 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 Many times people leave it when time has not manifested the let there be. They run away. Don't be like that. If you are going to explore, you need to be patient. You need to be patient. Some people have left different relationships and have not benefited from any because they were never patient. Just when they thought, we've waited long enough. How long did you wait? One year. Do you know what it means for, like, to wait for Jesus Christ for three and a half years? Then he now dies. And now goes. <laughs> That's frustrating. There was a brother I saw yesterday. Was it yesterday? The first day. The first day. We went somewhere together. So I was coming back. This brother has served different men of God that I know personally. Very strong men of God. But he was never patient with any of them to rise. When he's waiting small, because they've never called him to be a pastor or they've not sent him to start a branch, he leaves. When it's small time, he just, he, you know, he believes he has a lot of, and he does in a sense. But small thing, if he's not, if he never start to blow, he has left. Be patient. Be patient. Be suru. Even Jesus had suru. Ah, what is your problem? Be patient. Some people just so, 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 they never reap. Because of impatience. Paul said, count it all joy. Remember that scripture? When you fall into diverse trials and temptations, count it all joy. When you are working in an organization, you are impatient. This problem is becoming too much. Whereas that job was once upon a time in testimony. Yeah, you came to share, praise the Lord. People of God, praise the Lord. The Lord has been good to me. This God is a faithful God. <laughs> Alakwari. See, you won't believe it. <laughs> Inside this faithfulness, it was like the Lord made that man go and leave so that he could give me the job. Come on nine months later, you are bored. I want to change this job. What is wrong with you? What you will share the testimony? You took our time in church. We all shouted hallelujah for you. Hey, brethren, help me praise the Lord. Nine months of persecution. <laughs> now roll. Now say you want to drop off. You didn't drop off, you know. Roll from the people of God. Let me pray. <laughs> now you have gone. Melanie Moro. You know the Tiba Bashi. But do you get my point, please? We are working together. Be patient for the vision. Be patient. They say, well, look at where we've been. We've been like this like since last year. Be patient with the vision. You will come back and not meet us here very soon. Yeah. Be patient with the vision. I know some pastors, they will tell me, I used to know Reverend Chris Oyakilome. He was my seat mate. Eh -eh. <laughs> What's my business with that? Why don't we know you? Because you are impatient. Some wives are like that too. I know of a, a friend of mine. His wife left him. So you have been saying that the future is beautiful. We have a future now. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. She left. She left. Now the brother is doing better than before. You know how men, men, men can be like their mumu sometimes until their time happens. You start to see Malachi. And it doesn't take time for men to handle this Malachi. They wear it like as if they've always had it. Men, do you not know? Yes, they know where to go to immediately it comes. I've even got Musa running. 
men. You will see a brother like this, he looks broke. Give him some 30 days and God blesses him. You will think, ah, did you know where you will go to when the money comes? He knew. He knew. It doesn't take time for money to come for. I don't know why it's like that, but I've seen it too many times. Money on men. They have a relationship. And once it comes, it fits the man. Ta. I went to one brother in Dubai. This guy says, I build churches for people. I build for churches. I say, come, you must be my friend. Sit down here. <laughs> you must come and build one in Ghana. I build for churches. It doesn't look like it. Wow. Mama, you remember? Mama told me, have you snapped that guy? I said, thank you for reminding me. Brother, come and follow you. <laughs> Let's snap. It doesn't look like it. Money, money is beautiful. Just when you are, I'm, I'm getting tired of this relationship. The guy just, have you watched that film? Watch that film that that guy won 10 million. That terrible film that the lady wanted to come. Eh? Acrimony. Your head did there. Acrimony. Go and watch it if you've not watched it. Online too. See, you know some people just feel that watching films is nothing. Let me tell you something. Every film is a possibility or an event that has happened before. Think of Somebody put scripts together. It's either something that has happened or it's going to happen someday. So don't think it's just a film. It might be a prophecy. So what am I just saying? Be patient. Be patient with God. Someone tell them, say, be patient with God. Look at a man like Bishop David Abuye. 40 years patient with his master. 40 years of saying sir to one man. 40 years. They sent him to different places on his own. He grew the church to 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. And he never converted it to his own. <laughs> it's amazing. Ah. Don't forget that that church, they have offering. They have tithes. They have people. Not once, not twice. Praise the Lord. Be patient. Be patient. God honors it. Number six is you have to act in wisdom if you must explore the relationships of your life. Wisdom here means a lot. It means discretion. It means intelligence. It means direction. It means um, utterance, how you talk. It means a lot. You have to act in wisdom. If your relationships of your life will make meaning, you need to act in wisdom. Number five, seven, you need to act with respect, mutual respect and humility. The people you are relating to need your mutual respect. Don't only let them respect you, you must respect them too. Can I hear your amen? amen. Let me add this wisdom and respect together. Don't over empower someone beyond his deserving level. In your relating with people, don't over empower people beyond their deserving levels. It is natural for people who are empowered to be deceived of their position. So from time to time, do a check on them so that they will not fall into pride. What I just shared with you, entrepreneurs, note it. Don't over empower people beyond their deserving level of competence and loyalty. Make sure you check it so that you do not come back with a feeling of betrayal in the nearest future. Paul says, don't ordain a no. He said, never give office to a novice. You know why? He wrote it there. He said, lest he become fool in his heart and proud and the devil will take advantage of him. That's what the Bible says. So when you give people power or you know, authority, watch their sense of difference. It's not in an attempt to keep them small. It's important. Otherwise, you will inflate their size more than they can handle. If you leave a field bare, grass will grow. You will not see oranges suddenly grow. Because life is designed to create weed by itself. If you don't chew it, oranges will not just apple will not suddenly but weed will grow anywhere. Because the soil has stubbornness. So please, watch that. Don't act foolishly in your business in an attempt to do partnership even with your spouse. 
that your husband and wife does not mean that in terms of how you should live with mutual respect is perfect. You need to discover it. You need to discuss it. Please, are you hearing what I'm trying to say? Otherwise, you say, my wife broke my heart. She took the business away. She didn't take the business away. You had one that was believing that you are not interested. Don't want to say too much. To enjoy the new realms of relationship, you need to be persistent. There's a lot of difference between persistence and consistence, which is the next one. Who can help me differentiate? Persistence, consistent. Persistent and consistent. Brothers, if you are not aware, you can win a sister through persistence. Hallelujah. Most women don't know what they want yet until you show you are the one. You like, be angry. Most sisters don't know what they want until you prove you are the one deserving. So you can know that an average woman walks on the road not decided. If you help her decide, she will follow you. That's why you see someone, other man can take another man's wife. That's why it's possible. I thought you were married. She can follow you if you are serious. Ah. I very don't got him so. <laughs> so let me tell you stories. A woman married to another man left her husband's home and came to another man's house. You don't believe? After having six children. And follow the man. Follow who no rodo. My brother, follow who no rodo. Now, Jesus. You will not believe what I'm saying to you. you. Better believe it. Mama is laughing. She knows why she's laughing. Left a man, six adult children, to follow another man. And had three children for now and again. Why are you shouting? You don't shout really. What did he say? Animation. Let me tell you something. See, listen. Women are judged differently. Hear me. What I just said, the Lord grants us understanding. Women are judged differently for their functions and for their roles. They are progenitors of mankind. They are judged differently. As a man, you are the custodian of the seed. You are judged differently. So a woman can do something and go scot free. You try it. You will never remain the same. So you have to understand that when women do some funny things, funny, some funny things, so they themselves don't even know exactly what they are doing, what they are doing. Thank God for spirit controlled women. But you have to be persistent. If you're a brother here, don't leave your wife alone. In the name of traveling out. If you are not talking to your wife, somebody is talking to her. I'm just telling you the truth. Though. Thank God you know I'm married. And my wife is in the service. So that you don't think I'm talking about you. I have my own home too. It is how it is. If you are not talking to your wife, somebody is talking to her. Women don't stay idle. I tweeted the other day, most women hate dull men. If you are not able to communicate, women's language is in conversation. You see, I don't like talking much. If you like, don't engage your wife productively. And don't say what you just feel like saying. Say what she wants to hear. Violence everywhere. <laughs> Alright, praise the Lord. <laughs> so I said there's a difference between persistence and consistence. Who can help me? I want to close with this. With the last one. Persistence and consistence. What's the difference? Doctor, can you help? What is persistence? What is consistence? Who wants to help doctor? Doctor, can you try? Try.
bring it down, bring it. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Persistence is coming to something that you so want every time, time to time. While consistency is doing the same thing the same time, every time. Doing the same thing. One more time, say clearly. So persistence is coming at, at something that you want, that you desire so well um, every time. While consistency is doing the same thing you want every time. Yes, you know. Yes, give an example. Just okay. So, for instance, um, consistency is, um, for instance, so persistency at first is you want to be a doctor, and then you're writing jam every year. You can choose other courses, but you choose not to do choose do, choose other courses. You're coming at MBBS every year, you fail MBBS every year. That's in persistence. While consistency is when you now get MBBS, for you to be a doctor. Even with the example of jam, persistence is persistently checking to be MBBS doctor biology fikens fikenbao. Abi is that not called fikenbao? Uh -huh. Then that's persistence. But consistency is that you are consistently writing jam every year. That consistency jam 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2000. <laughs> you get the picture. Yes, that's consistence. I agree with you. Do you agree with what he said? Yes, sir. I think let's give him a round of applause and appreciate him. So we need to be persistent. For example, some of us want relationship with our pastors. You need one. I looked at one of my sons today that came visiting. I told him one of the things I've seen that is missing in you in a long time is prophetic covering. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. If nobody's prophesying over your life, you don't have a clear future. You may want a good thing for your life, but somebody is supposed to stand in the realm of the spirit and be speaking over your life. It is important. I know you have a good Ori, but Ori, you tell me prophecy. Ori, prophecy. See, you need to have prophetic words being shot consistently, consistently, consistently over your life. Not randomly, once a day, you forget what the evil said. <laughs> Consistently, or ashe, or ashe. Just let it be going every day in your life. Even your environment will be 36 degrees cool. I'm telling you, consistently, not randomly. Today, because of your birthday, you pray for me on my birthday, and then they come. You know, you know. No, let there be someone you are provoking generous words over your life consistently. Consistent. I'm telling you the truth, sir. Enter into new realms in Jesus' name. Amen. So please find that. And then finally, I said faith and love. And I will stop with that. Faith and love. For you to experience, I put these last two last. Excuse me, please. Because I wanted to explain it last and make you know that love does not come on the top chart of it, but it's the most important. You see, don't celebrate people who don't celebrate you. Stop it. You are replying everybody doesn't mean they will reply you. You are liking everybody's page so that you think you are generous. You don't need it, sir. Find those who don't clap when you win. Mark them. Act in love and love is not mumu. Love means that you are able to be true and sincere in your heart towards all men without offense. The active word in this discussion is without offense. Make sure you are not offended by anybody. Praise the Lord. So those that don't like your page, don't be offended. But don't be liking your page. Hello, sir. Hi. Eh? Ma? It's true. Don't be deceiving yourself that maybe if you are nice, people will be nice to you. You understand? Don't be deceived though. Don't be deceived. The reason I say so is that 
If you choose a wrong interpretation or discovery of human beings, and what you get is disappointment, it's your fault. You are the one that sets expectations beyond reality. Follow how people treat you. Don't be saying, no, it's not like that. It's like that. You are the one that doesn't want to agree. This thing I'm telling you is so that you won't come to church and be spending the first 15 minutes trying to build your spirit man from offense. You have to be sharp. You know, in this morning, I was talking about how the devil can use something against you. How that your righteousness, he knows that you are that type of person that you must fast on a Wednesday. He now makes sure that you are not feeling too fine so that you can be sick from, from fasting. And in your mind, you'll be saying, this fasting, say, look at me, I'm now feel, not feeling fine. Whereas you could have just called your pastor and said, sir, please, I'd like to break my fast today. And nobody will beat you for it. He will use your righteousness against you. Go and think about these words I'm saying. As a husband, your wife knows that you won't beat her. You won't do anything and she's cheating on you. What do you want to do? Or maybe cheating is too far. Maybe she's just doing nonsense. Anything you say, she's not answering. After all, she knows that you will never touch her. Ah. You know what someone, one of my friends told me one day, he said that he has asked God for forgiveness. So that when he finishes what he wants to do, he can pack all of us together inside the blood. You can't be living on the edge with people that you are living with and expect new realms. You need to be alert that nobody foolishes, foolishly guides your life into foolishness. I'm sincere with you. Listen, if you are dating someone here, many foolish things will happen in your relationship. If you are married, many more foolish things will happen. But I want to urge you with one law. Make sure that you act in love and in faith with that individual. It's a law. Faith and love are laws. They are not options. There are laws. In fact, not walking in faith and love can make you go to hell. So I will stop here for tonight. Are we, are we listening to what I'm saying here? Press for new realms of relationship with love. Don't wait for love to come to you. Give love first as a seed. And it will come back to you as a harvest. Are we blessed tonight? Please? Yes, sir! I want you to stretch out your hands like you are receiving wisdom tonight and say, Father, I receive wisdom from my relationships.